Peggy 16. Hey everyone, it's Danmar here with Battlefield Expert Stolly and uh, today we're going to give you a bit of a guide to recommended weapons for the Assault and Medic classes. First up, we're going to look at the uh, Assault class and specifically the Light Infantry Combat role. So, what gun have you gone for and, um, and why is that such a good fit for that class? So the Light Infantry is a very aggressive assault class, so you want to go for a fast firing, fast reloading and good hip fire assault weapon. So the Gewehr 1.5 is perfect for that, it has 31 rounds, it's got the highest rate of fire for an assault rifle in the game. Okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about specialisations for, for this gun, talk me through these. So you're wanting to go for the aim down your weapon sights faster, so that's quick aim. It's important for you to be able to acquire targets quickly once you've spotted them. Then you want to go for ported barrel, which means your weapon recoils less horizontally. You're also going to want to have improved accuracy and aimed fire whilst moving, so you can move left and right and dodge other people's bullets whilst you're aiming at them. Um, and then finally, uh, the vertical recoil reduction. So on this specialization um, tree, you've got less vertical and less horizontal recoil, so you can really nail people at range. Yeah. Good stuff. For sidearms, you want to go for a high damage sidearm. So you want to go for the revolver. The revolver does is a two-shot kill at close range. So it means if you run out of ammo in your main assault rifle, you can switch to your revolver and maybe just hit them once and they'll die straight away. Fantastic. And what about on the gadget side? So the gadget side, um, we're going for a standard grenade because you're going to be wanting to do as much damage to groups of enemies as possible. You're not really using much utility. And then you're going to go for the Piat rocket launcher over the Panzerfaust, because the Panzerfaust is more suited for uh, destroying vehicles, but the, the Piat launcher actually does really high damage to infantry. Um, and then the final thing I'd go for is the dynamite. So if you want to destroy the fortifications, you take the dynamite, um, and it's also amazing at lobbing over walls and killing lots of infantry in a group. So that's why you want you, your explosives, I guess, to cause that initial damage and then rush in and make sure that you've got that close range combat to enable you to get, get those hits in. That's right. So you're, distra you're distracting them with the explosives and then you're running in with the uh, rifle to finish everyone off. Okay, so now let's talk about the um, the vehicle buster weapon loadout. What's your sort of recommended pairing for this one? So for this one, uh, I've gone for the STG-44. It's quite similar to the Gewehr 1.5, but it has a slower rate of fire and is slightly more accurate over range. So you can do a little bit more tap firing, you can, you can actually fight people at longer ranges. And I've gone for a medium scope. Um, because it's actually the, the recoil is really controllable. So even at close range, you can actually use the medium scope and it shouldn't affect your aim too much. Specializations, it's one thing to pick a weapon, but what would you recommend for, for that gun? So for that gun, you're wanting to go for the specializations that basically tone down the recoil. Uh, being able to do consecutive shots is important with uh, a gun like that. It's high damage over range. So mainly horizontal, because horizontal recoil is harder to control. Uh, that's what you want to go for. And then we're also seeing the um, the anti-tank bundle grenade. That's right. So um, because you're not killing an infantry anymore, you're trying to go for the tanks. The anti-tank grenade does a significant amount of damage, maybe um, 20 to 30 percent of the tank's health. Wow. Um, then you also go for the Panzerfaust because it has less drop. If you know what I mean? It travels faster than the Piat, um, reloads a little bit quicker, uh, and does more damage. Um, um, and then for the last equipment, I went for the AT mine because it's very passive. Mm -hmm. You leave it on the ground, you leave it somewhere that has a high traffic of vehicles, and then the vehicles will accidentally drive over them without seeing them. Um, but you can also take the sticky dynamite um, if, you're, if you want to be a slightly more aggressive. And you can actually take out tanks on your own just as the one assault class with wow. all of the equipment. 
Is it is it a class that benefits from maybe having a, a couple of you working in tandem so you can really sort of concentrate your, your fire in onto vehicles and, and I guess wear them down much faster rather than you sort of trying to fly solo? Absolutely. So because of your class, as soon as you damage that vehicle, it'll then spot it for all the other people on the map so that your teammates who are also playing assault can see where the vehicle is and attack it from multiple angles. Now we move over to uh, the medic class, specifically the combat medic first. Uh, your weapon of choice for this is the uh, Suomi. With this class, you want to be going for hip fire weapons. Um, so the Suomi has a very good hip fire, one of the fastest rate of fires in the game. I've still gone for um, aiming down sight, 33% faster. I think that's very important. This one I've actually had to go for more of the accuracy spec just to get the extended mag. The extended magazine on this weapon is very important. So you start off with 30 rounds, and then with the extended mag specialization, it goes up to 50 rounds. And the reload speed is roughly the same, even with the extended mag. So you're running around at close range, spraying people with hip fire with 50 rounds, um, and it's devastating. Where does the medic aspect slot into this? So with this class, uh, I've actually chosen the medic bags so you can only throw out one bag at a time but it means that you can throw out bags whilst on the move so you're going around fighting and whilst fighting you can just be throwing medic bags to your teammates and healing yourself at the same time without having to stop and put down a box um, i've also chosen the revolver as the sidearm high damage two mm -hmm. shot kill at close range if you happen to run out of uh, ammo on your suomi and your main weapon um, and then there's also the grenade, the normal frag grenade. Again, you're, you're more fighting infantry at this point. You're going for less of a healing role, but you can still revive people and heal people when it's, a pro when it's opportunistic almost. Got you. So it's, it's, it's really useful, I guess, sometimes if you're last man standing, that you've got that ability to, to bring people back, but still, still hold your own in the meantime as well, you know, if you're getting swamped. Yes. Uh, and lastly for this video, let's talk about the field medic combat role. What, what's, a, what's a good fit for this slightly more passive role? So um, obviously you're going to be wanting to stay at a bit more of a distance. You're not going to be wanting to just rush in. Um, so I went for the slower firing EMP. It's less reliant on hip fire and it's a little bit more of a high damage, medium range weapon. So I've gone for quick aim. Um, improved accuracy whilst aiming in, because I want to be mobile whilst being accurate. Um, and then I've also gone for some recoil reduction as well. Um, I'm using the M1911 as a secondary because it's more of a medium range weapon with a few more rounds than the revolvers. So you can do a little bit more damage um, more consistently at further ranges with a faster reload. Um, I've also gone for the incendiary grenade because it's um, area denial. So it stops people from being able to push. So if you want to revive your teammate and you don't want the enemies to push through that doorway, um, you can throw that incendiary grenade. It lasts for five to 10 seconds. It gives you the time to revive people. Uh, and, and so you've gone for a medical crate here rather than throwing out uh, packs. So the medical crate means that you leave it in an area and multiple people can take as many pouches as they want as long as the medical crate's there. So it's much more of a passive, you know, leave it with your teammates and you can go and run off and revive people and you can still be healing them because they have to deal with actually getting their own health. Good stuff. Uh, and here we see what's this, the smoke grenade rifle. Yeah, so this one's really important. Um, when you're reviving people out in the open, if you don't put a smoke grenade down, they can see you and shoot you whilst you're reviving them. Um, but the smoke grenade covers your actions and it just gives you that cover so that people can't just shoot you whilst you're reviving, which is a really common thing because uh, you have to take the two seconds to not be able to look around yeah. and the smoke just guarantees that. Well, thank you very much, Stoddy. Uh, that's the end of our first in-depth guide to the, the weapons and the combat roles of Battlefield Five. Uh, look out for the next instalment soon where we'll be covering the weapons for the support and recon classes. Thanks for watching. Play it on the world's most powerful console.